We're finally back everyone, the Villarreal series has returned, there's a lot to catch you guys up on, we've been away for a little while, I'll tell you why in a minute, but we've had transfers, we've had probably 20 odd football matches, a Champions League group stage, a half a league season, so much to get into. So with that being said, let's run the intro pretty quickly and get right into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Villarreal series. I'm Jake and like I say, we've been gone a long while so there's so much to catch you guys up on. But first, just let me do my little thing of asking you guys to like the video. Chances are it's been so long since we uploaded the last one that this might not appear in too many people's recommended. So if you are watching this, hit the like button. It would help in pushing it out to as many people as possible here on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll put the percentage up there. But if you are watching at this point and you aren't subscribed, why not? You've watched this many episodes, clearly you enjoy it. It would mean a lot to me as we push for 10,000 subscribers. And also don't forget to drop a comment down below if you want to get involved. I try and respond to every single comment, but here we are. Villarreal. Today we'll be playing Real Sociedad who are second in the league and only two points behind us. We're in a bit of a rut but overall the season has gone very well. I'll catch you up on all of that now but firstly the reason why we've been gone for a while I went on holiday. I went to Croatia. And no, not to scout Wonder Kids in real life. I went to Croatia. And I just laid there, uh, not in the sun because I don't like the sun, but in the shade. And I enjoyed myself. And we was away for a week. And then I came back. First thing I did after I got home, recorded a Villarreal episode, which by the way, I had to play loads of games on holiday to get to this point. But you know, it's a good thing to play football manager on an aeroplane. It passes the time. But yeah, I got to the point. I recorded two games. It was actually a Champions League game and a league game only to find out as I was in bed at about midnight editing the video that it had no audio and I'd forgot to click the microphone button on after I came back. I guess when you don't record YouTube videos for a week, you forget these kind of things. But now I'm here and hopefully the audio is working. Testing, testing, one, two, three. If it is, great. Let's get back to the Villarreal series where you last saw us all the way up here, guys, when we played Sevilla in one of the first games of the league season. And since then, there's been one month, two month, three month, four month, like five months is that? Yes, it's been a lot. To sum it up, we've been good in the league, but recently started to let it slip. We are sitting top by 43 points, but there's only four points between us and fifth place. It's a lot tighter this time round, but with a game in hand on all of the others, other than Sociedad, the second place team, who coincidentally we are playing today. Today's match is super important. If we win it, we will go five points clear at the top of the table which will be massive. And of course, we've had the Champions League where in the group stage, we were good, but we should have been better. I mean, we finished second, which is a bit disappointing. I'd have liked to have finished first, but we got battered by Roma 3-0. And because of the head-to-heads, they finished top. That meant there was plenty of teams for us to potentially get in the next round that could have been dangerous. But we got Leipzig, who are a good team and are doing very well. I mean, they got 14 points in their Champions League group in the Bundesliga. They're not right at the top, but they're up there as one of the better teams. So it won't be an easy game, but it could have been a harder draw. And I think that's the next time you'll see us after today's video. But I just felt this was a perfect game to catch you guys back up on after the last failed recording. So I got to this point and here we are. So that's our general form. We've been playing well. A lot of our players have been standing out too, and we have made a few transfers. It is currently uh, the start of a January transfer window, so there's a few things going on. The first one is Mats Hummels leaving to join Zenit at the end of the season when his contract expires. That's fine. He's 35. He's on a lot of wages. I only bought him to be a mentor here for a season or so, so I wasn't too bothered that he did decide to go. The worrying one, though, could potentially be Alejandro Francis, who you might remember right at the start of the season, his release clause was activated. He decided not to leave, and we gave him a new deal, but because of registration rules and squad wage cap rules, I had to set it so that contract comes into play at the end of next season. So for this season, he's going to have a £40 million release clause. And you bet you, as soon as we got to January, loads of clubs were activating it. And I don't think he's going to stay this time because they are some good clubs that have bid for him. Manchester United, Barcelona, AC Milan, some beautiful cities and Manchester to go and live in there. So he might leave us. But we have brought in one player by the name of, where is he? He's on loan currently. Angelo, we are looking for a player who is left-footed on this right-hand side with a lot of potential and the Brazilian suited the bill. We bought him at the start of the season but let him go back to Santos for the remainder of the season. He's looking like a very good player and someone that will fit right into our team next season but currently he's on loan and in general everyone's playing well. The youngsters are getting involved, we've got the older heads 
all performing. I think the only position I'm actively looking to recruit in is that left wing back spot because Grimaldo and also Pedraza haven't really shone this season and they're both fairly old now in football manager terms. If you're older than 25, get them out. And they are 26, 27, 28. Um, there's a lot of interest in a lot of our players. Grimaldo, Kessie being heavily linked with an £82 million move away. He's meant to be going Chelsea and that is his release clause. So if they activate it, there's nothing we can do. But we've got a lot of young prospects coming through the club, the likes of Kenneth Wynn, Caden McLaughlin, who somehow still keeps scoring, even though he's not technically the world's best player. I don't know what this guy takes before a game, but he just finds the net no matter what. And George Galen, who is a player that I showcased last video, who he actually signed from Sociedad for £1 million. And um, he's played for us a few times and scored a couple of goals, but now he's been loaned out to Zaragoza in this transfer window. So hopefully he has a good second half of the season out there. I'll be honest, I've got a badminton match to get to in 10 minutes. I know badminton. I go to play with my friends. It's not the world's most exciting sport, but you know what? It's something. It gets me active and it gets me off this football manager screen. So what I'm trying to say is I need to kind of speed this along. So hopefully you won't mind. Hopefully you don't mind. It's going to be a shorter video this time. I was actually going to wait until the next Champions League round to record um, after the last failed recording, but I just wanted to get a video out. I wanted to catch you guys up. So let's pick the team. It is going to be Kepper in goal, who's been a brilliant signing, playing very well, a 7.35 average match rating so far. I promise you, he will be Spain's number one one day again. I will make it happen. We've got Francis at the back. It could be his final game for the club. Who knows anymore? We've got Zagadou, who is demanding game time with Pau Torres. Rosas at the back with Lamptey. Am I happy with that? Um, probably not, but we're going to go for it anyway. Bruno Fernandes and Kessie. I'm actually not going to start Kessie. I'm going to start Parejo because once again, he's another player who's asking for more game time. They're all at it at the minute, these Villarreal players. They just want to play. Um, Giori hasn't been amazing this season, but he's still going to start up front. It's a position where I'm probably still looking for that 40 goal a season striker, but it could be Giori. It could be the Galen guy that we looked at earlier, the youngster. Who knows what it's going to be, but this is our team for this match. So with that being said, let's get right into it, shall we? We need a win here. It'd be massive for us if Real Sociedad beat us, which I don't think they will at home, but if they do, all of a sudden, I don't think we'd be top anymore, right? I can't remember the exact calculations, but I feel like it wouldn't be good news for us. Of course, it's not if we lost a game, but yeah, we would actually drop below Sociedad if they beat us. So if nothing else, we need to make sure we draw. But let's see how this game goes, because like I mentioned, the last couple of games have been very poor. We've just not shown the ability to score goals in the last few, but maybe it will change here. I mean, it's our wing backs that haven't been performing great, and we've kind of switched it around now with Lamptey on the wrong side and Rosas getting the opportunity at right wing back. We'll see what happens, but this is our first highlight after 13 minutes, and we're looking good. Yerry Pino finds Parejo. He was fouled, I think. I don't know. It's gone to Dan Juma, he scored, it looked like he was clearly onside, but the game's saying offside, so there's probably something wrong with it. Let's find out though, is the goal going to stand? Please just give it us. Goal awarded, fantastic, we are 1-0 up. I was going to say Parejo scored, but it wasn't him, was it? He had the best chance, but then Parejo was there to finish. Not Parejo, Dan Juma was there to finish. Good finish from him, 1-0 up after 13 minutes, that is a great start. The wind keeps blowing my door open, so I keep having to cut to go and close it again, and then I move positions on the camera, and I feel like I'm not centred anymore, but hopefully I am now, and hopefully that wind stops blowing the door open. Um, but here we go, we're building up the ball, blah, 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 blah. we're building up the ball very well, Rosas is in this right wing back spot. He's deadly with a cross from these areas. It's a great ball in. Jeremy Pino finishes. And I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, guys. But considering these are the second place challengers currently, and I know it's very close in and around the top, but considering these guys are our closest title challengers right now and we're tuning up after 16 minutes, I think it might be another season where we win the title. I mean, we're five points clear, only about halfway through the season. I mean, I think we're exactly halfway through the season. Um, so if we can keep this up, It'll be a fantastic year for us. Two title wins in a row. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but so far, so good in this match. We've dominated the ball, dominated the chances, and we've only allowed Sociedad one shot on target. And just as I say that, they're going to score a 50-yard screamer or something, aren't they? No, Alejandro Francis with a 7.4 average match rating, having a great game so far. This might be a send-off match. If it is, what a player he's been. What an investment. 40 million feels far too cheap for the man, but if that's what he goes for, then that is what he goes for. This is a player I'd love to sign. I had him on a Chelsea save a couple of years ago, but for some reason, his valuation is always like 140 million. Mikhail Oyozabal, I'm talking about, the guy's name I can never pronounce, and it's a great finish from him. Um, he's volleyed it in from fairly close range. Good build at play from Sociedad. I thought we had survived that initial attack when Francis got ahead of the ball. 
But he also about gets around at the back post, finishes. There's not too much we can do about that. And that is 2-1 now. And if Sociedad go and score again, we'll be getting a bit worried. But hopefully we can put another goal. Ah, that's a penalty. I was going to say, hopefully we can put another goal ahead of them to say two goals ahead. And I think we've done that because that is a clear foul on our player. Hopefully it's a penalty. It will be. It's probably going to be Bruno. It will be Bruno. He never misses Bruno Fernandes. So this is 3-1. I hope I'm not going to like look like an idiot right now. But of course I'm not. Bruno bags it. Bottom right corner. Bruno Fernandes, people call him. Um, and when you're an opposition fan like I am in real life, he's proper annoying. But when he's on your team in Football Manager, he is great. Interestingly, um, he was actually listed in the top 50 world's best players in this Football Manager simulation as number two ahead of Haaland and only behind Mbappe. And that's where he finished in the Ballon d'Or as well. He very nearly won the Ballon d'Or. If it wasn't for Mbappe, we would have had a Ballon d'Or winning central midfielder Bruno Fernandes. Um, and that would have been very impressive, considering the guy's usually a number 10. We do have another chance here on the 60th minute. Bruno plays it in, Parejo to the back post, and Giori scores. I was just about to substitute him after what looks to be a poor performance, and if he doesn't get given the goal here, he goes off. No pressure, Giori, but if this doesn't count, you are getting subbed. Is it counted? I don't even know yet. We're about to find out. It has counted. He gets away with it. He survives another day, and I'm just going to rotate a little bit now just to make sure... We see this game through and everybody is happy with their game time. So Parejo is going to come off. I'm also going to bring on Caden McLaughlin up top and Jared Moreno. Even though Giori did score, I'm going to let him come on for a little bit of game time up top there, up front. So there we go. 4-1 up. It's been a great game. 20 minutes to go. We can rest some of our best players and I should hopefully be able to get to badminton in time. How long have I got? I've got about seven minutes, so as long as we finish this off pretty soon, it will be great. And I actually almost prefer if we just had the game as 4-1 and didn't have another highlight. I've got places to be, Villarreal. Stop playing so well. Bruno whips it in. It's headed away out to Alexander Isaac, and he is probably going to pace up the pitch and score. But there's only one player faster than him on this pitch, and it is Tariq Lamptey. All 20 of that pace has shown there. It's a great ball in with his weak foot. Kessie gets into the box and scores. Usually he's a box-to-box -box Kessie, so he doesn't get too many chances. But for this game, when I brought him on, I brought him on in that centre midfield position on the attack duty. And when you give him the opportunity, he gets in there and he scores. We've just got to hope that that goal doesn't make him look so good that now Chelsea come in and pay £82 million for him. I love Kessie. I want to keep him. But to be honest, £82 million would go a long way in replacing him in our squad. But 5-1... What a performance, what a message sent out to the rest of La Liga. We might even make it six, why not? Who fancies it? Here's Bruno Fernandes. I bet you Caden McLaughlin scores somehow. He always ends up on the score sheet out of nothing. Like he's just so direct and somehow gets involved and scores goals. And here he is. He's going to do something. He's gone back to Francis. You watch, I guarantee you he's the one that scores. Caden McLaughlin, back to Rosas. Maybe my guarantee wasn't very good. But here he is, he shoots. Oh, he's gone wide. That's what he does. He just tries. Whenever he gets a chance in the box, he just does this like powerful snapshot and he keeps scoring from it. I mean, I don't know why we're seeing this highlight. I'm assuming the game's just going to be over. Oh, come on. I've got places to be. I don't want to see one of these end of game highlights. I'm even going to put it on just super fast speed and just hope nothing happens. <laughs> Let me out. Let me out of this chair. I want to go. Um, right, Dan Juma, <laughs> it's, it's, I can't commentate over this. I really hope this isn't a goal when I'm missing some beautiful play, but I'm convinced this is just one of those end of game highlights that we're seeing for no reason. And I think I'm right. There we go. I was correct. We have won 5-1. What a performance. Is the Champions League on this year? I don't know. Of course, that is the aim of the series. Whether we're good enough for it yet, considering we couldn't even top our Champions League group without an amazing team in it. Roma beat us 3-0 away from home. We might not be ready for a Champions League yet, but I mean, in the league, we are certainly the dominant team now. And that is the end of today's video, guys. So if you have enjoyed, smash the like button, get involved in the comments down below and subscribe if you haven't already. But most of all, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.